Welcome, Sharp Watchers and Decision Point Faithful. Welcome to this January 24th, 2022 episode of Decision Point. My name is Erin Swenlin from DecisionPoint.com, and I'm here with my father, Carl. How's everything going for you, Dad? Quite an interesting finish today. Right. I know. I don't know if I can do it today. I'm suffering from whiplash. <laughs> That is really, it was a crazy um, finish to the day. So I know it'll be interesting to look at all of those charts. We're going to start off as usual with our market overview and indicators. Not all of them are going to be updated, but we'll have to see what we're getting just based on what has closed off and what is available to us to see, but it will be very interesting. I'm going to show you why the sectors look so unhealthy. I'm just going to give you a candle glance. We'll look at um, some of the areas of support, possibly for some of the sectors. But overall, I just want you to get a feel for um, how bearish it really is out there. I'm going to show you the industry group summary. This is something I've started to use more frequently to find strength within certain sectors, or even just to find groups that maybe aren't in a strong sector, but are still showing a lot of strength. So I'm going to show you how I go through that industry group summary and finish with a diamond. I have diamonds of the week, but as I've been telling my diamond subscribers, it's really time for watch list material rather than expanding your exposure. But I'm going to show you two charts that are lined up pretty well. But as I said, I'm not... Uh, advocating expanding exposure right now because I'm showing those to you. All right, so let's take a peek at um, what's going on as far as our sector scoreboard. But before I do that, I want to remind everybody that I do a free decision point trading room on Mondays at noon Eastern. If you go to our homepage on our website, you're going to see my picture just like this. And if you click on that, you can register. It's recurring, so you only have to do it one time and then you will be notified an hour before I go on air when the trading room is gonna start. All right, so Dan, you just forwarded me this decision point sector scoreboard. It looked like we were gonna get a few more neutral signals than we actually did. And those of course are generated with dark crosses of the 20 and 50 day EMAs. They're neutral because those crossovers have occurred above the 200 day EMA. So we don't go into a full sell unless the crossover occurs beneath that 200 day EMA. You want the, if the 50 is below the 200, you're not gonna be really interested in holding it. And neutral, all cash or fully hedged on that position. So currently we have four neutrals. One cell came in on the long term. This is a death cross that came in on XLC. We'll take a closer look at that sector chart when we get there. But which uh, there were two, I think, that were going to go neutral and, and did not. Right. Uh, industrial and uh, real estate. And they just missed it by a, a hair. So <laughs> the price is well below the 20 and 50 EMA on both of those. So tomorrow, unless there is a huge rally that takes price back above those moving averages for those two sectors, th they will be turning to uh, neutral tomorrow. All right. Like I said, we'll take a look. So I'll plan on for sure looking at the, the XLC XLI and XLRE charts more closely when I look at the sectors. But let's go ahead. I'm going to pass it to you um, for a market overview. Before you do, would you pull up a chart, a 10 minute or whatever it is you use uh, sometimes, the yeah. chart of the uh, SPY? I can do that. Uh, let's go over here. So I have in my DP intraday chart list here. There you go. So this is the five, five minute candlestick um, for the last five days on the SPY. Well, so I, yeah, I don't use this often, so it's not ready hand, but uh, it's definitely a, a reverse head and shoulders pattern. Exactly. <clears throat> and uh, uh, I 
went to lunch at about an hour before the market closed. And I said, well, it's going to definitely be a down day. And then I checked at the one o'clock, checked my, uh, on my phone. I was like, my God, what, if I got the right date here? I know I did the exact same thing. I, you know, I, I dropped for lunch and then came back in preparation for the show. And I I had to hit the refresh button a few times on the stock charts homepage to make sure it was right. Okie doke. So now I'll take it. I want to start out with uh, uh, Apple. We had a nice head and shoulders pattern on Apple. And uh, this is a daily chart. And back, actually, we actually reached the... Uh, in, uh, initial downside target for that formation today uh, for the reversal. And also I want to look at the monthly chart and, and point out the uh, types of corrections that this stock experiences. Uh, the worst on this is 64% uh, down. And these were all breakdowns of parabolic advances. They don't show up very much on using this uh, linear scale, but they are there down 45%, down 32%, down 40%, uh, 36%, and the latest was 21. Now, <clears throat> let's just get a little better look at the, uh, here we go. You can see it has broken down from this parabolic we, you know, we to fudge this, and, and if it stops right here, it can it just higher with that? I'll be moving that out. But just to, right now, we have a breakdown of the parabolic, and it can be pretty, pretty horrendous. And uh, I was looking at the going back to the, yeah, I was looking at a potential downside on, the, let's just say a fifty percent. Correction would take it down to about 100. Uh, um, no, that's what I, I, 112 it would be to get the PE at uh, 20, which is still overvalued, but not so much so for Apple. But that would be a 50% correction would take it down to around. Uh, 96, 95. So th there's a potential for this to go down that far. And uh, I can't know for sure, obviously. <laughs> As I was talking about, here's uh, the industrial sector. See how the price is well below the, the, the 20 and the 50 EMA. And uh, we could have a huge jump tomorrow. If it gets back above that, they will not cross. There will not be a, da a dark cross on those. That's the real estate as well. See, there's certainly within the realm of being able to cross up through there. But if it's a desultory uh, response tomorrow, rather than a huge rally, uh, we will get dark crosses on those two. So mm -hmm. let me go to my candle chart. Again, you can see the huge down move we had today. And the uh, VIX got up to 40. It's a lot of volume. Right, really, really high volume considering that it's, you know, this is these star volumes are, that's uh, quarterly object expiration, which you get a lot of high volume there, but this is unusually high. Advanced decline lines, we did get it on the advanced decline line, we got a, an uptick. Uh, advanced decline line decelerated, but it's still headed lower. And that's the advanced decline volume. Silver Cross continued lower on all 
uh, three major markets. Uh, we're at fifty four percent on Silver Cross on S P five hundred. That is the percentage of stocks that have the twenty E M A below the fifty E M A. And this, so Nasdaq is at twenty five percent. So it's definitely in bear market territory in that regard. The new highs and new lows. We actually didn't get as many new lows today as we got back uh, there in December. So you actually have a, a positive divergence here, which uh, would, again, contribute to our expectation of a, at least a bounce. The weekly chart, really huge breakdown there. And looking monthly, we got a, a solid breakdown on the monthly chart. The monthly PMO has topped, but that it will not be a final issue until the end of the month that could reverse. Climax assessment. I actually expected another yeah. downside climax today. And uh, I had a, dotted, a red dotted line across it. And you'll have to move, remove that when you do your uh, <laughs> charts today. <laughs> but uh, there was no climactic activity except the volume, which is, yeah, this is blowout volume. And that really is the confirmation that the, the, for this bottom here. It's a short-term issue, but it could start something longer term. But no climaxes today. Mm, interesting. Well, I think that it was that last minute rally. Otherwise we might've gotten an initiation. And I'll let you take this chart. <laughs> okay. Um, this is my thing now, the bias assessment. So what I like to do is I, I look at the percentages of stocks above their 20 and 50 day EMAs. Those percentages are very, very low. But as I pointed out in an article on, uh, in Chart Watchers on Saturday, these, in, these indicators are still not as oversold as we have seen them. But the bias is clearly bearish in the short and intermediate term, just because those uh, participation numbers of stocks above their 20 and 50, those percentages are so much lower than the Silver Cross. We know that the Silver Cross is going to continue lower. You look now at the damage being done about uh, the percent of stocks above their 200-day EMAs, and you can see now we're all the way down to 56%, 57%, and that's well below the Golden Cross Index, which measures, of course, how many stocks have their 50 above their 200. And since that percentage is lower than the Golden Cross Index, that also gives us a bearish bias in the long term. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, our short term indicators. Um, really oversold, really, really oversold. Um, the only thing worse would be the last bear market was so again for the short term it looks like we have a really good shot at a, a, a pretty good bounce here and i won't guess how but it could be it could be up there mm -hmm. and our intermediate term indicators um <laughs> if this is as bad as i get it would be extremely bullish uh, Otherwise, I would say we ought to be looking for, you know, readings at least this low uh, before the intermediate term gets oversold enough to to make a a bounce. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's an extended bounce. And putting the two together, we see short term we can expect to bounce. Intermediate term probably going to see lower prices yet. The dollar index is uh, in a triangle formation here. Uh, it's up, so we would expect gold to be down uh, a similar amount. 
percentage wise. But I can tell you that that is not the case. <laughs> Gold uh, was up today um, um, a half a percent, and that's nice. We're seeing it consolidating in here. Crude oil, still within a rising trend channel. It's found support on this horizontal support today, and it got back into the channel. So it's still uh, bullish looking on this chart. Bonds rallied and then fell back. Let's see big, what- the, Big bearish engulfing candlestick there. <laughs> yeah, no okay. that one. And I'm looking for the 10 year. It was down, but rebounded. There's good support here. And of course we have the rising trend channel or trend line here. And actually it, it has up there closer, uh, should be up there closer. What have I forgot? Um, gold miners? Bitcoin, Bitcoin definitely would be worth a look. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Bitcoin uh, actually sold off and then is, is headed higher. It's, it's down 52% or has been 52% down from its high. And let's, I have another Bitcoin a little longer term. Over, let's go back. Over uh, here, we've had a we have a head and shoulders pattern, which would imply that the prices are going to go much lower. Uh, that's what you would project off that pattern. And uh, looking a little longer term, we have uh, but this formation, which is a head and shoulders pattern, looks like a head for a potential head and shoulder. We have a left shoulder, head, and potentially a right shoulder over here. So. This could be drug out for quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And I also added to our list of charts, Ethereum. I haven't drawn uh, any lines on it yet, but um, so that's up there uh, for our subscribers uh, to on that list of charts with, that I maintain. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that'll do it. All right, let's get my screen up here. And since you're talking about it, might as well go to our website really quickly. So for our subscribers, we have these three members only chart lists and um, Carl's talking about the DP alert chart list. It'll now have that Ethereum chart in it. Um, all of these charts in this chart list, Carl keeps up to date with annotations. So. Um, one of the nice benefits of being a subscriber to either of our reports is you get access to those chart lists with um, up to the moment, up to the day annotations. All right, so well, let's look at these sector candle glance. So on Fridays with my Decision Point Diamond subscribers, we have a diamond mine trading room and it's just for our subscribers. And one of the things I do on Fridays is I do a thorough sector analysis. Um, but I always start with this candle glance so we can get a sense of where all of the sectors are currently. And as you can see, almost every single one of them have lost the 200 day EMA as support. Uh, the only ones that have not would be Staples, nice defensive sector there. Energy, which continues to be a winner. And I can, uh, after this pullback, I think this sector is looking especially interesting. But all others, uh, with the exception, I have to say, it looks like utilities haven't quite broken down below that 200, but everybody else has. Certainly there are support levels available down here. And we are seeing you know, the rebound that we got today, but. Overall, I mean, you look at the sector charts and there's just not a lot of strength to be found anywhere. Uh, I ended up looking at staples and energy and utilities as my three to watch going into this week. And, you know, there's, those even don't look that, that healthy. Um, I'm gonna show you XLC because we did talk about that recent, today we got that uh, death cross on XLC can see where the 50 is crossed below that 200. 
I'm noticing too that on a lot of my charts, I'm having to pull up um, an extra couple months just to find the support levels. Um, currently, we do have a support level here on Com Services right at these lows, this top right in there. And you can see we dipped just below that and then we did rebound. But ultimately, even after today's um, nice move, we'll have to see if we get some improvement in that participation. Because until we start seeing improvement in participation, um, I, I wouldn't be bottom fishing here. So really, I wouldn't be bottom fishing anywhere to be perfectly honest. <laughs> Okay, so I wanted to show you the industry group summary. I've found this to be very, very useful. I have set up a, um, a industry group summary um, chart style that I can use. And it's got, um, let's see, I think it's a one year, yeah, you know, about a one year chart. Um, it's got the PMO, it's got relative strength and then it has stochastic on, stochastics on them so that I can check them out. So what I usually do is, you know, you can just flip through these and just see where the strength might lie, but we already know XLC is not really of interest to us. The ones that are interesting right now are the consumer staples. But again, when we look at momentum going on here, honestly, <laughs> Every single one of these has declining momentum, new sell signals on a lot of them. You can see a top below the signal line there, drug retailers, same thing, big drop. Soft drinks, which had a really great move to the upside, again, uh, declining momentum. Tobacco was actually my um, industry group to watch on Friday, just because it was one of the few that still had a, a rising PMO. But as you can see, uh, that rally looks like it has been pretty much exhausted. And distillers and vintners, again, just really not a whole lot of places to go fishing here. Um, pipelines or oil equipment services, you can see hit this area of support, appears to be ready to bounce off of it. But I mean, that was a pretty far dip below that 20 day EMA. Integrated oil and gas, another big pullback, but it's holding above that 20-day EMA, making it a little bit more interesting. This is a pretty big pullback here for exploration and production, but it does seem to be holding that 50-day EMA. Pipeline, still above the 200, dipped below the 50, but did close above it. Still, we're looking at some pretty ugly momentum and stochastics going on. Coal, which had been a big winner, has pulled back to that 200-day EMA. Uh, it looks very interesting to me at this point as a place to maybe go fishing, but the problem is, is we have this new PMO cell signal and stochastics are still pointed lower. So we're really struggling to find any kind of positive momentum, anything that looks like we're on the verge of turning, and it's just not there. I mean, even in healthcare. So again, you can just click very quickly through these. If you would like to have my um, chart style for the industry summary, um, send me an email, Aaron at decisionpoint.com. I'll send you the link. And then you can have your industry group summary look like this, or certainly you can adjust it to, to work for you. So that was pretty much what I wanted to point out here on the industry group summary. But I think um, metals and mining still look pretty good. Gold miners still look pretty good on the pullback and now uh, move back up to the upside. I've been watching steel on this huge um, decline, waiting for it to find some support. Um, but this is a really uh, heavy pullback in steel. And I think it might be interesting later on, but right now we're still, Everything is just still in correction mode, pullback mode, um, very little in the way of positive momentum going on. Again, just flipping through these, you can see there's just nothing good going on. Um, I mean, if you <laughs> go through each of these industry groups like I did last Friday and look at them, it's, it's just a really ugly scene out there. Um, not much uh, out there for fishing if you will. So just be really careful with your exposure. Currently, I'm at 15% um, uh, as of the close today, but more than likely, I'm going to close a few other positions on any strength that we see 
tomorrow out of uh, this late day decline. All right, diamonds of the week. I'm again, I, I'm going to present these to you. They have the elements of a chart that I like to see that usually are going to resolve to the upside of favorable setups. Um, and capital federal financial uh, is a bank. And I like the look of the indicators on this. It is struggling here. It's got some very tough overhead resistance to overcome. But if it does, as these indicators suggest, RSI is positive, stochastics are rising, PMO whipsawed back into a buy signal. The group looks like it's, you know, it's been underperforming, looks like it might be trying to um, turn that around. Um, but really, ultimately, when you look at CFFN, you've got some pretty good uh, relative strength going on in there. I use my five minute chart on the right. This is what I do in my trading rooms to look for entries and exits. Not gonna find an entry on CFFN until probably much later tomorrow. You wanna watch for that PMO to give you that crossover buy with a positive RSI, and that would be your conservative buy point on a five minute chart. So at this point, I don't see much uh, going on here for CFM, CFFN as far as an entry, but I, like I said, the daily chart looks pretty interesting. And my final one before we close out, this one is low volume, so I hesitated to um, present it but it's got a pretty interesting bottoming uh, formation going on, kind of a triple bottom look on it. Um, don't have the breakout yet. And you can see that this is gonna be a tough area of overhead resistance. But again, these indicators are lined up the way I like them with the PMO crossover buy signal. Uh, volume is coming in as price is moving higher and stochastics rising. In this case, relative strength for the group is a bit better here as it is trending higher. So those are my two diamonds of the week. But as I said, I would hesitate to expand my exposure now, but at least you can see kind of what kind of chart I'm looking for. And as far as entries on CIR, looks like we passed um, entry points. Now we have topping PMOs, which are sell points. So you run a weight, obviously, for it to more than likely unwind a little bit here and then look for that PMO to turn up and get that crossover positive RSI and that would be your buy point. All right, that's all I have. That's all we have actually for the Decision Point Show. Catch us every Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern and happy trading. Um, we all both say goodbye. <laughs> Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.